Hello, 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 hello. Martin here with another property clinic. Yeah, your chance to ask me questions. It sort of is your chance to ask me questions, but this is the sort of what happens when you have asked me questions. Because on a Monday, uh, hashtag Ask Martin Monday, you have a chance to ask me questions on my Twitter, which is at TV Martin Roberts. Uh, questions. Uh, yes, they can be about property, they can be about wherever you want and I'll do my best to answer those questions on the day on Twitter boop, boop, boop. so you'll get a short truncated version of this and then if you're lucky enough oh yeah right really it's been one of the best things in my life Roberts yeah if you're lucky enough that you end up in this bit on my property clinic on Martin Roberts Property Tidbits make sure you like this make sure that you subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah this is good this is for Wendy this is the first question huh I like the fact that people are noticing. Uh, it is scary in some ways because I have to check what is in fact behind me. But Wendy says, Wendy Clark, hello Wendy. What is that on the shelf behind you? It's been puzzling me for weeks. And she's implying talking about this. It's actually Wiley Coyote. Remember Wiley? That's Wiley, Roadrunner. Me, me. Um, I'm just a huge fan of uh, Wiley Coyote and uh, the Roadrunner. Yeah, just awesome cartoons. Quite old now, but I remember they done in their 50s and 60s, I guess. No words, no nothing, just these little characters. Well, I put all the characters, cartoons like that, Tom and Jerry, they didn't have any, well, they did have some words in common, Tom and Jerry, didn't they? And just this continuing theme of this poor, poor coyote who just never gets the bird. And this rascally little Roadrunner. Now, in theory, you should feel sorry for the Roadrunner because it's just trying to stop itself being eaten and the coyote's intentions are not honourable. They are to eat him. But he's hungry and he is a coyote. You know what? And the Roadrunner's just so cocky. Like, really? Uh, just, I think, sorry, but I side with the coyote, right? I mean, we all like a loser in this country anyway, so mm, we do. Uh, you know, look at it, Eddie the Eagle. Brilliant guy, met him a few times. What a, what a hero. But, you know, we really like people who, who you know, just put up a good fight. Love it, love it, love it. So that it is, Wendy. It's Wiley Coyote, one of my heroes. Dardy da Mandrake. Hello, Mandrake. Uh, one of my favourite parts of Homes of the Hammer is when the poor camera person has to scramble around the auction room trying to catch the buddies in action. Love that bit. I'm also enjoying it where, where, when they haven't run the legal pack and it gets exciting. Yes, well, quite. So the cameraman, yes. Well, actually, it's a special breed of cameraman who can go to the auctions because, as you will no doubt have noted, it is pretty fast and furious. And it's sometimes a really difficult spot where the people are bidding from. So you have to be whoosh, 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 with your camera around the room. And some people are obviously a little bit um, like, coy or you know it's a little bit secretive so they're not exactly going whoa look at me i'm about to bid so they yes basically we send them off to some tibetan monastery and they learn with the kung fu master uh, the art of uh, intensely fast reactions and blah 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 sam hi martin if a grade two listed property is a wreck inside in need of a total refurb would that need to be protected so grade two listed property in theory the outside and the inside and the garden and any buildings in that garden are all covered under the listing and in theory you need to get approval before you do any work on any of those things now certain properties are listed for certain features which they have so it might be the front facade it might be a fireplace certainly if your interior has something mentioned on the inside you touch it at your peril and don't underestimate the severity of touching a listed building without actually getting the necessary approvals because it's bad so you definitely need to seek approval now the simple thing to do is just involve the listed people bit listed buildings people at the early stages uh, and you may well find that they say no you need to do this and that i mean hopefully they will be sympathetic and they'll be helpful and they'll guide you because that's what you need but if it's a wreck inside then they are hopefully going to be supportive of you putting it back uh, into some a manageable livable kind of space which is good dull boy asks hello dull boy out of margarine Oh, God, but uh, without a doubt, yes, blur the margarine. Well, you know, I say blur margarine, but margarine in my mind is that margarine you used to have when you were a kid, which was really vile. I think margarine these days has probably come on quite a lot. And sort of the butters, you know, getting sort of, they, they mingle the two together, really, haven't they? The edges between butter and margarine seem to have sort of like slightly softened. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Good. I don't know where that came from. That was good. Well, okay, it wasn't that good. Yeah. Mm. So those sort of butters which have got like a spreadable ability, like, you know, they've got like some kind of rapeseed oil or something spread in them which means that they can spread them no, they're quite good i tend to use those you can't be oh you can't, whoa, 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 you can't be oh look at this gonna, we're gonna put up a picture of like a, a a piece of toast or a crumpet dripping in butter now it's totally and utterly unhealthy we know that but uh, really butter real butter 
on a crumpet or a oh, muffin or something. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Jane Spencer Rolfe. Hello, Jane Spencer Rolfe. Who picks the songs on Holmes and Hannah and do they ever adapt the filmy edit to fit a song's relevance? Uh, yeah, well, I think actually they would definitely. So it's it's the editors. Okay, it's all down to the editors. They are the people who pick the songs. Do they adapt the filming edit to fit the song's relevance? Yeah, well, they could certainly cut in time with the music. Dump, dump, dump. Uh, sometimes they would showcase things in the piece of music that the words related to, perhaps. More often than not, it is the images that drive the music rather than the music that drive the images. Terence Trundley. Hello, Terence. That's a great name. Terence Trundley. Fantastic. When are the new shows starting? Have you started filming from Homes of the Hand at the lockdown yet? Well, here's an update. Last week, I filmed for the first time for uh, Homes of the Hammer since lockdown. It was a property in Ilfracombe. And it was one property. We are only managing to do one property a day with all the social distancing and all that kind of stuff. And it was just me and the camera person. It went fine. It went fine. It was a bit strange. And, you know, all the, uh, you know, all the PPE and all that kind of stuff and, and not shaking hands and, and uh, you know, and uh, all the things we all have to go through now uh, made it a little bit odd, but but at least we started. So that is an update. We have filmed a Homes and the Hammer episode post lockdown. Um, so, 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 yeah, so, so hopefully we're, we're going to be doing more and we're on a roll. So that is definitely good news and that will be coming out. I don't know when. Daniel asking when my next property review will be coming out. Well, here's the thing. If you glance idly around this channel, my YouTube channel, what I tried to do when I set it up was kind of like make it like a TV channel. So there's stuff on there that's like this, interactive, the question time. There's stuff on there which is frivolous and silly, like um, the DIY disasters with, you know, a little cameo from Wise Alec. The kids DIY, sort of kids element to the, of the programming and kid adults DIY and the property clinic, which is a bit more formal. Yeah, and the other thing I've started to introduce, hopefully, is, uh, well, I have, is, um, is newsy related stuff, because I know I should do more of this. I should be commenting more on the news. I could be a commentator. Yes. Uh, Dave. Hi, Dave. What are your thoughts on velocity banking to pay off a mortgage? Ooh. Well, I have to confess, I don't quite know what velocity banking is. Velocity banking, that is a completely different kettle of, ke kettle of fish. A velocity banking uh, is, uh, well, I, 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 I'm assuming that it's that opportunity you might have to pay or more off your mortgage. So if your mortgage payment was £800 a month, you pay 1000 even though you don't have to. And that £200 just chips off the actual amount that's outstanding. And there are definitely lots of lenders who would uh, allow that. Although I'm not a financial advisor, so you need to seek professional financial advice uh, before making any financial decisions or commitments but it's a really good idea if you can afford it because it does chip away at the amount you owe and also you don't get compound interest on the amount you've paid off so over time if you paid off let's say ten thousand pounds you're not only just paying off that ten thousand pounds you're paying off the interest which that ten thousand pounds would have accrued so actually it's a really good thing if you can do so uh, it's, a, it's a it's a good idea if that's what velocity banking is uh, good question here vantive guy vantive guy says Mark. Uh, ever get the feeling that in Homes Under the Hammer Series 50, the presenters will be saying, those grey and whites really date this property to the 2010s. And what were they thinking by taking down those internal walls to create an open kitchen diner? <laughs> I think it's probably true. You know, I'm sure in the 1960s, the avocado bathroom suites and everything they were doing then what well, made perfect sense at the time. Uh, and we look back now and go, oh my gosh, this is so, oh my goodness, goshness. So yes, perhaps greys and whites will look terribly dated it's funny, isn't it? Because you do look back even quite recently to things and which, you know, even four or five years ago, you thought were quite trendy and um, and they're not anymore. So I'm sure that in <laughs> Series 50, the presenters, whoever they are, Series 50, now, I'm not sure I'd make that, but well, who knows. Kevin Lee, would you rather have Monster Munch for ears or What's It for eyebrows? Well, let's just see if we can try this. Charlie, my lovely editor, is now going to superimpose monster bunches over my eyebrows. As I look. And now, monster munch on my ears. So what do you think? Monster munch or what's it? A monster munch for ears or what's it for eyebrows? I think we will go with the um, what's it for eyebrows. Ooh, Andrew Peacock, hello. Do you come from Romilly? If so, whereabouts? And what school did you go to? And did you run a clothes shop called Martin Robbers Menswear? I've got a pint on this. 
Ooh, well, Andrew, uh, we are in grey area here because no, I didn't come from Romilly. However, my first house was in Romilly, which is just outside Stockport, just outside well, in Greater Manchester, if you like. I in a place called Water Meetings Lane in Romilly. I don't know if you uh, know if you know Romilly, you know Water Meetings Lane. Yeah, my first house that was great uh, on, on the ex council house in uh, Water Meetings Lane, and it was awesome. W taught me a lot about the opportunities you can have from doing up property and making money out of it because I bought it and uh, did lots of normal things to it bought it for £23,000 I think it was and then two years later I'd uh, redone the kitchen I'd redone the bathroom I'd uh, sorted out the garden and I managed to sell it for £56,000 so I thought my gosh because in the same time I was working for a local radio station and I was earning £25 a week so uh, the money I made from the house was a lot more than I made from actually doing my job so that was uh, that was great yeah so um, no I did not run a clothes shop called Martin Robbers Menswear <laughs> and let's be honest one thing I'm not particularly known about is my sartorial you know ahead of the gameness no <laughs> Robert Clark hello Robert when you visit a fire damaged property who advises you whether it's safe to enter the producers or local health and safety both uh, we are very careful and the thing with fire damaged properties by the time we get to visit them they they have been through the auction so so they will have been flagged up by the auctioneers as to whether or not they are safe to enter and we will largely go on what they say but we do our own health and safety checks before we do anything and that's across the board from asbestos to dust to um, animals to whatever it might be yeah, we won't go in if it's not safe, that's for sure. Uh, Kyle Burton, hello Carl. Carpets in bathrooms, yay or nay? I've always found the idea disgusting, but they're lovely when you get out of the shower. Okay, well, how about a bath mat? You know what? Carpets in bathrooms, yeah, as you say, soft, soft on the feet. I, I would run along, but water, carpets anywhere where there's water. Just, you know, you wouldn't have a carpet in the kitchen, really. I think you want to save your carpets for your bedrooms and your hallways, um, living areas, probably even then, you know, if you want something that's hard wearing, put, put, put um, wood down. And don't forget, you can always put rugs on the top of, of whatever you put down. So to round off that statement uh, with a definitive answer, no, definitely not. Matt Soul, hello Matt. Did you ever imagine you would spend so much of your time in Stoke-on-Twent, Twent, Twent, <laughs> Stoke-on-Twent? And how do you come up with something different to say for every Stoke property? I don't know but I have to say if there's there's definitely lots of worse places than I could have ended up lots of spending lots of time in Stoke on Trent we always get so welcome in Stoke on Trent and when we're filming we get neighbours strangers coming up to us offering us cups of tea and biscuits and of course the Staffordshire oat cake so yes um, and I do occasionally wonder myself when I go into a two up two down property wherever it might be and think, how am I going to think of something interesting to say here? And somehow something comes out. And I don't know where it comes from if I'm all, if I am going to say you mean all honesty. Oh, this is such a cute picture. This is great. Andy Dobson. <laughs> House Daleks. Do they add value to a property or are they best hidden from potential buyers? What a cute picture. I didn't say the name of your son or daughter there. That is so cute. Oh my gosh, Andy. I think more houses should have a resident Dalek. And uh, as long as they're not aggressive, uh, I think you'd be absolutely fine. And I don't think they'll put anybody off. In all reality, it shows you've got a lovely family home and people buy into a feeling in a house. And they, if they think it's been a happy house, um, you know, that goes a long way uh, towards uh, making it a place that they would want to buy or own. That's a lovely one to finish on. Thank you for your questions. Don't forget, you can ask me your questions on Mondays. Ask Martin Mondays, the hashtag on my Twitter, at DBMartinRoberts. Uh, make sure that you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time for more questions and answers on my property clinic. Thank you.